Welcome back to another episode of Vertical South. If you've been enjoying the content, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave us a comment on what you want to see next. Today we're going over a special topic, which are the tools that we use to set the boulders you see on our episodes. So stay tuned. All right, so let's go ahead and just get a general look at what my pack looks like here. Mine is very messy, as you can probably see. There's a lot of different things that I keep in there. Spare bolts sandpaper, lanyards, my charger, extra batteries, all this stuff. I'm gonna start pulling stuff out one by one and going over why it's important, why do I keep it in my bin, and uh, what I use it for in the gym. So the first thing, first and foremost, is a pair of safety goggles. You may have seen on our channel us uh, spending extra care trying to make sure that we remember our safety goggles. It's very important that you wear them while you're setting especially if you're set screwing, you're using any sort of impact driver. If you're using an Allen wrench, it's far less dangerous, but anytime you're using a power tool, you should be wearing your safety protective goggles. Even a small shard of metal could ruin your vision for a lifetime. Uh, another thing I keep in my pack is an Allen key. Allen keys are super helpful for removing a stuck bolt. Also, uh, passing it off to someone to fix a problem, uh, to climb up the wall and fix a hold or something like that is way easier than strapping up with your impact driver so I keep an Allen wrench on me at all times and I normally denote my equipment with a piece of tape moving on I've got a tap this is a 3 8 inch and a 16 teeth per inch tap here this is used for fixing the t-nuts in the gym anytime you have a bad thread um, on a bolt and it spins in it's probably gonna ruin that t-nut so the bolt is pretty expendable you can fix them, but the T-nut is far more labor to fix, so it's pretty important to have a tap with you. This is when it's extra important to be using your safety goggles. Um, these intentionally cut out slivers of metal, and those can eject and fall back out if you're in an overhanging situation, and you're looking up, and you're using a tap, and uh, obviously gravity is going to force feed that, those metal shavings back down towards you. Very important you're wearing goggles during that time. Moving on, I've got a drill and countersink bit. I'm probably gonna clip in a piece of footage of me actually using one of these. Um, this allows me to add set screw holes to different areas of holds. Sometimes you'll have holds and the set screw area will blow out or it'll get over expanded, it'll crack because it's on a weak part of the hold or maybe your hold may not even come with a set screw hole. Having this, this is eight gauge um, screw head and then it has a countersink here. This allows in one pass for you to add a new set screw location, adding extra security to your holds. Also helpful for making screw on. So if you have a Lone Star and you have a screw, you can add another set screw hold so you can Lone Star on a foot shift wherever you'd like to. Links to all this stuff will be in the description. I should have all that in there by the time this video posts. Moving on from this, I keep a bevy of different size, oh no, almost dropped this into the porch. Different size bolts. Uh, this is really helpful for when I have brought my gear over uh, to a specific location. I need to swap a bolt very quickly, but I don't want to run across the gym or run across my workspace to find another bolt. So I keep bolts of different assortments all, all throughout my pack. All right, a few other fixtures that I use. Uh, T25 bits are really important for driving in set screws. I actually keep two different lengths in my kit. One is very small, and the other one is on an extender, so I can actually switch out the bit that's in it. This also helps me drive in screws in strange locations. Oftentimes, I'm not just screwing in holds, but backing plates and stuff to the back of the wall to fix spent T-nuts. So it's helpful to have a larger length of set screw bit as well. Your gym or your homemade diff differ. You may have a T20, T15, or something like that. I like T25. They come in a lot of different lengths of screws, a lot of different gauges, which is important for different size holds. To that end, I also keep a bunch of extra set screws in my kit. So if I need to set through something on the fly, they're right at my fingertips. I keep a couple different lengths for different size holds. Sandpaper is helpful for taking down sharp edges on holds that may have developed over time 
or potentially like a snaggle that has occurred when you added a set screw or for whatever reason you may just need to be able to knock down a couple edges it's also helpful for calluses you can knock down your calluses on your hands before you climb and finally before we get to the drill is i keep on me a lanyard in case i go high up on a ladder i'm sitting on the auto blaze or something like that i can attach a carabiner and then tie the other end to my drill attach the carabiner to like my waist or my harness and that way if i anything drops it doesn't hit the ground doesn't break my drill and more importantly doesn't hurt anyone else now that leads me finally to the drill that I use, which is a Makita. This is an 18 volt uh, cordless impact driver. It's an awesome drill. I've been using it for over two years and it comes with an LED light, all the modern accoutrement that comes with a impact driver. This thing's really a workhorse. The batteries, much like standard Impact drivers these days have an LED light on the back of the battery so I can easily tell when I need to swap out. The battery tender is very awesome. It's super quiet and it also gives me an alert when the battery is fully charged so that way I don't leave the battery on the tender for too long which is not good for your batteries. This is 18 volt. A lot of people want to pick up the highest voltage that they can for the money but it's often not necessary for the purposes of route setting. And really a 20 volt or even higher than that impact driver is generally too powerful from what I found and from what I've read from other setters. Um, maybe even too powerful for the strength of the T-nuts. And you'll find that if you over impact with too powerful of a driver, you can warp out the back of the T-nut as it pulls into the wood. And actually, especially for newer setters, you can get the same job done with a 12 volt impact driver. Now people are gonna have their opinions about this. You know, they want more power. You could just use a more delicate touch. But whatever it is, I think 18 is kind of right in that butter zone of powerful enough to do anything you want, but also not so powerful that you may accidentally over impact a hold, which can break, or the T-nut, which can warp and bend out and gall the teeth of the bolt and the T-nut as well. This comes with an extra battery, which is super helpful for when you're on a long setting day and you need to set a bunch of problems and your first battery dies, your second one is charging, you can swap them out, and the battery generally charges before your other one is expended, and that way you kind of have infinite battery life. This also comes in a great spring for the extra money if you're really, if you're getting into route setting professionally. Maybe at your house it's not as a big deal, but for the hard case, it's really, really nice for protecting your own gear, and I went even further and spray painted my, back, my last name, my back name, uh, my last name on the back a lot of the other setters at the gym Have Makita's as well. And you definitely don't want to mix up your gear and go home with someone else's drill um, Once again, all these items are in the description a link to them are going to be there for you If you end up picking them up or you know that you're gonna buy one go ahead and use the link there It'll really help out the channel and give us some positive uh, Some positive growth that we can throw into ad money and all that other YouTube garbage, but other than that I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful and Hope it inspired you to get some gear and start setting. All right, catch you around.